Chapter 7.2, Day 2, we're looking at graphing rational functions of the form y equals ax plus b over cx plus d. Now in this video, I'm just going to go straight into using long division in order to rewrite these functions and then graphing using transformations and then uh, focusing on the simple rational form a over x. So we're going to rewrite f of x equals 2x plus 1 over x minus 3 in the form g of x equals a over x minus h plus k. There should be a plus k there. And we're going to describe the transformation of the graph of f of x equals a over x. And then we're going to graph the function and state the domain and range. So the first thing we want to do is rewrite the function using long division. So x minus 3 is the divisor. It goes out here. And the 2x plus 1 goes underneath that division bar. And then we always start with dividing the first terms. So this is 2x over x, and so that we're left with 2. So 2 goes here over the same ones column here, or the constant column. Then after that, we multiply the divisor. So 2 times this x minus 3. Make sure to distribute. And then that's going to go in this place here. So this becomes 2x, and then 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. The next step is to subtract. When we subtract, we change all the signs to opposite signs. And so the first term disappears. Now we have 1 plus 6, and so that is 7. So remember that that is our remainder. And so because we want it of the form y, g of x equals a over x minus h plus k, this is what we're going to do. Write 7, the remainder, that goes over the divisor, x minus 3, the uh, value that comes right here, right? So the remainder over this divisor. And then we're going to add this answer on top. So this answer on top is going to be added at the end. So plus 2. And so now here is our function um, that we want, g of x equals this function here. And so let's talk about the transformation. So number one, the 7 at the top represents a vertical stretch by 7. Vertical stretch by 7. Uh, but more importantly, we want to take a look at how is it shifted right, left, up, and down. So down here, this is x. It shifted right 3, right 3, because we know that x cannot equal 3. So that's going to be our vertical asymptote. So this is going to be right 3, and the plus 2 means it's up two. So what we're going to do is, is if you watch my videos from the previous lesson, what we're going to do is just move our origin from the middle here, from the normal origin, and we're going to shift it right three up two. So this is going to be right three, so one, two, three, up two, and that will be our new origin, and that's where we're going to draw our asymptotes. So there are the asymptotes. And so now what we're going to focus on is just our a over x, the 7 over x. So we have 7 over x. And so we can kind of take a look at that. Well, what numbers can we plug in? So we should always plug in 1, right? 7 over 1, that's just going to be 7. So from the new origin, you're taking these from the new origin from here. And then so if you plug in 1, then you get 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 here. Okay. Now the reason why that shifted, again, is because we already moved it from here, right 3 up 2. And so that's what this represents, our new origin. Okay, so 7x, and then the next number we should pick is whatever the numerator is. So the numerator is 7, then we should pick 7, because anything over itself is going to be 1. And then so we have a point at right 7 up 1 from the new origin. Now, you know, just remembering what the graph looks like, uh, you know that it's going to make this kind of a curve here. So two is pretty, two points is pretty good. If you wanted to, you could plug in another point, uh, but we will get a fraction. So maybe plug in, if you want to, plug in three. So seven over three, that is about two and a third. So if you plugged in three, you'd get about two and a third. So somewhere down here. So kind of get a better picture of that. But two good points is pretty good. So that uh, six. 1, 7, and 7, 1 over here is fine. Then, of course, you have to pick numbers to the left of the vertical asymptote. And so what we're going to pick is a negative value. So we're going to pick 7 over negative 1, right? So when you plug in negative 1, you get negative 7. 
here. And then you pick the negative 7. 7 over negative 7 is going to be negative 1. And then so that's that other point there. Um, and then so, you know, and again, you could pick another number. Uh, like if you pick 3, you know it's 2 and a third. Just get another good idea of what, the, what it looks like. But you know that it crosses through at least those two points, the 7s here, and then approaches the asymptotes on both sides but does not cross it. Now let's talk about the domain and range. So let's just label the center of this new origin here. That is 3, 2, right? The x value is 3, the y value is 2. And so we know that our x values will never be 3, because that's where our vertical asymptote is, and it will never be 2, which is our horizontal asymptote for our y, right? It will never be 2 for y. So our domain is all real numbers um, in x except x equals 3 here. Then the y, it's all real number y, except y equals 2. So try this example down here. Uh, use long division to find the new form, g of x equals a over x minus h plus k, and then um, describe the transformation, where so how did it shift right or left, and then describe the domain and range. So if you use long division, you should have gotten negative 4 over x plus 3. Negative 4 was the remainder here, and then the whole number was 1. So we know that the negative means reflected over the x-axis, and then the 4 means it's a vertical stretch by 4. More than anything, we know that it shifted left 3, up 1. So we move that origin, left 3, up 1, and then draw the asymptotes there. Then we're focusing on our a over x. Our a over x is this negative 4 over x here, which is what I wrote here. And then so you just plug in good numbers. So if you plug in positive 1 for the new origin, you would get negative 4, so down 4. And then you could plug in 4. Negative 4 over 4 is a 1 here, right? Negative 4, you plug in <clears throat> 4, you get a negative 1. So it goes down from that new origin, right? 4 down 1. And then 2, you know 2 is a nice number to plug in because it goes in evenly. So you plug in 2, you get a negative 2. Then you plug in those values on the other side, draw your branches. Again, making sure you're not crossing the asymptotes um, and that the graphs look like this. They should be in opposite uh, quadrants here. <clears throat> so I hope this helps you out. Uh, you could try the other ones on the right side here. Okay, so as more practice, and then I'll end with the video with showing the answers to all of these so that, you know, if you got some practice and, you know, wondering if you're doing the right thing there, uh, you can check it out.